It seems like time and time again that Konami of the TCG cannot catch a break when it comes to Yugi tubing or social media because Jesus Christ, they are so bad at it. Between the YouTube channel trying to tell me what cards are good in Maximum Crisis and how true Dracos work literally a day before Nationals in America to this now where the European TCG posted a poll of pictures of which FA archetype card do you want us to spoil first and then they just drop the entire four set on us because they realize it's not really that good I hope but then the American TCG North America puts a poll up of Vindred card archetypes or not archetypes artworks and says vote on these which one do you want to see first but meanwhile Hound Horde is in that set of pictures so we know what this card does so that's one already that can just be chalked off the poll list but then they don't have the foresight to understand that they're showing the entire set of cards at Comic Con so that people are going to be able to see them read them and people know how to use social media so all of the effects that they were trying to get people interested and hyped up in are going to be spoiled and posted online as soon as they get access to these cards. I don't see how this company can just fail at social media this badly. It's actually kind of amazingly an art form. I cannot understand. This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. In this video, we've got the blue flannel back out again because we're talking about ritual monsters and a ritual archetype in this video. The rest of the Vindred cards have been announced to us. Well, not really announced. They've been spoiled to us because, like I said in the little opening segment, Konami doesn't seem to understand how social media works, and if they're going to show all of the cards to us at one setting, i.e., Comic Con, then they should be pretty, you know, understanding that people are going to write down the card effects and they're going to put them online. So we're going to know what these cards do. But anyway, we now have access to the knowledge of what all of the Vindred support is going to be for Code of the Duelist, and we actually get quite a few cards. The promo, strangely enough, is not even in the list of TCG exclusives for the archetype. It seems like the promo could easily be its own separate card that's not actually part of the core set, which is something that I don't think we've ever seen before. I could be wrong on that one. It might have happened once or twice in the past, but it doesn't look like that card's in the set because it would have to be under the TCG exclusive at, like area, and I don't see it in this list. But what I see are four other Vindred cards, and then we have a, another support card that is a TCG exclusive card that's not directly a Vindred card, but it is a zombie, and it's direct zombie support. So it could be used in the deck as well. So we actually have a lot of TCG exclusives for this deck straight out of the first set, and I'm very curious to see what the rest of the sets could give this set of cards. But without further ado, since we've got four cards to talk about, let's just jump straight into them and start discussing them one at a time. So first off, we have the main ritual of the archetype, Revendred Slayer. It is a dark zombie ritual effect monster level 6 with 2400 attack and zero defense and its effect is you can ritual summon this card with any Vindred ritual spell once per battle if this card battles an opponent's monster during damage calculation quick effect you can banish one zombie monster from your graveyard this card gains 300 attack so you can give it some little boosts in battle it basically is a 2700 beater at its smallest essentially so that's kind of all right if this Ritual Summon card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Ritual Spell from your deck to your hand, and if you do, send one Vindred monster from your deck to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of Revendred Slayer once per turn. So, by the instance of how this thing is worded, this deck does not get access into Pre-Preparation of Rites, which kind of, kind of makes me sad, because I feel like any Ritual archetype that's going to be successful in the future needs to have access to Pre-Preparation of Rites, but at least this thing can access Preparation of Rites, so I mean, I guess there's that, and with Necros currently MIA, I guess Konami could push regular Preparation of Rites up to two or three on the ban list, so that, you know, this deck has a little bit more support in the Ritual Department, 
if they wanted to push product, then they could definitely do that. But what is interesting is the fact that if this Ritual Summon card is sent to the graveyard, you can add a Ritual spell from your deck to your hand, and if you do send a Vendred Monster from your deck to the graveyard. Now that's very cool, very interesting, because that means if your opponent sends this card to the graveyard in any way, it doesn't have to be destroyed or anything, they could tribute over this with a Kaiju, and it still gets its effect. You get to add a Ritual spell from your deck to the hand automatically, offsetting the cost of the Ritual Summon right there, and then you get to Foolish Burial of Vendred from your deck, which can let you proct other effects later, possibly, as well as all sorts of other manners of foolishness that we have that we can access with the zombie theme. So, this is really cool. It, it's a Ritual Monster that pays for itself. It doesn't really have that many effects by itself, but it does gain effects from the Vendred monsters like Hound Horde, which we talked about in the other video. So, like, that's cool. That's pretty, that's pretty legit. And it's pretty legitimate indeed, but... Next card, Vendred Revenants. It is a dark zombie effect level 4 monster with 1800 attack and 200 defense. And its effect is, if this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, by battle or card effect, and sent to your graveyard, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. So it revives itself once, it can be a chump blocker, or it can just come back to the board and be something for a ritual material. But, a Vendred monster ritual summoned using this card on the field gains this effect. You can only use the preceding effects of Vendred Revenants once per turn. It gives the ritual monster the effect of, once per turn, quick effect, you can target one special summoned monster your opponent controls, banish it. So, it gives a quick effect of during either player's turn, basically, since this is the new TCG wording for during either player's turn, is just to say, once per turn, quick effect, which I just found out today, essentially, from people commenting on the Vindred Hound Horde video, uh, was that this is an effect that can be used during either player's turn. So it allows you to target a special summon monster your opponent controls and banish it, making it a form of monster removal. If you used it in conjunction with Vendred Hound Horde for the Ritual Summon, it can banish a spell or trap and banish a special summon monster once per turn during either player's turn for the entire time it stays on the board. That's pretty cool. That means your Ritual Monsters gain extra effects from what you're using as the tribute, and that's actually pretty neat and nifty. I really like that essence of power scaling that they're giving it because it instead of making the cards like Necro's level of they all have these effects built into them, you have to gather the effects via other cards, kind of like with the BLS ritual theme, how they gave the cards extra effects and stuff like that. So I think it's a very good approach. I think it's a very nifty approach. We've just been needing a good archetype to be able to use it in. BLS was kind of a flop because it's just really outdated, but this is a zombie ritual archetype, and zombies have a bunch of generic support that can be used like Mizuki and Book of Life and all that sort of stuff, which makes it pro like potentially very good. But so the next card, Vindred Origin, a ritual spell card. Here we go. Oh baby. This card can be used to ritual summon any Vindred ritual monster from your hand or graveyard. Yes! Alright, you must also tribute monsters from your hand or field and or banish zombie monsters from your graveyard whose total levels equal or exceed the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon. Oh my god, yes! This card is fucking great. If Revendred Slayers you controlled would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. So, this gives you protection for your Revendred Slayers, which is the ritual monster you're gonna be using this card to ritual summon, and what you get to use is you get to use zombies on your field or from your graveyard to ritual summon from your hand or from your graveyard. That is great. That means that all these generic cards we have, like Gozuki and Unizombie, can dump the ritual monster to your graveyard and then you can ritual summon it from your graveyard. That's fantastic. That is such a huge way to offset the basic like neg that ritual summoning has as a mechanic. There's very few cards that allow you to ritual summon from grave. There's Odd Eyes Advent and Necro Cycle. Those are the only two that come to my mind that allow you to do this. So that's great. That's amazing. And the fact that this card lets you ritual summon from grave is even more like just makes it even more impactful when Revendred Slayers is sent to the graveyard, because if you remember, Revendred Slayers' effect when it's sent to the graveyard is you can add a ritual spell card and send a Vendred monster from your deck to the graveyard, so it automatically adds a new copy of the ritual spell that could summon it back from the graveyard for free, and then at worst, 
you could literally just mill another copy of Slayers that could be banished to summon the other copy of Slayers. It's not going to have all these extra effects and nonsense, but it's still a way to just recur things and to make things better for a ritual theme. I love it. This is such a good ritual card. This is such a good ritual spell. I'm so hyped for this. I'm definitely going to be picking this archetype up because I want to at least have these cards on me for the next set of support. I don't think it's going to be doing anything nearly that amazing straight out of the gate, although it could, because we have access to all of these amazing zombie support cards like Book of Life, Mizuki, Unizombie, Shirinai, Solitaire, all that sort of stuff that allow the deck to do some really cool and kooky things in the form of using Cypher and Lord Omega in conjunction with the new Link rule set that's actually really good, just making Omegas, taking cards out of your opponent's hand and then being able to Ritual Summon on top of that. You, you have the foundation for a good zombie-based deck with these cards in it already there and established for you. Also, the fact that this ritual spell lets you just banish any zombies, doesn't have to be specifically Vindreds, is another huge plus for this card's design, because if it just had to banish Vindreds from your graveyard or tribute Vindred monsters, the scope of what this card would be able to do would be very, 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 very toned down. But, because we can summon any, like, anything based off banishing zombies, that means that we have Unizombie Engrave, Sure, and I saw a Terran Grave. We have all of these cards that we get to work with. That's so so fantastic. I'm oh I'm so I'm so hyped for like this archetype being potentially good, especially since the early time frame of Link format is going to be a very weird time frame. But and then it offers protection for the Ritual Monster. They have to kill it twice. That's so cool. That's so cool! You give your Ritual Monster extra effects, it searches other cards when it dies, but then when it, like, in order to kill it, they have to kill it twice. That's pretty fucking good! That's pretty fucking good. That's so good. And the fact that the Ritual Monster doesn't say can only be Ritual Summoned and not be Special Summoned by other ways, if you properly Ritual Summon that card, you can revive it with Mizuki. Whoa! <laughs> like, this is so cool! These cards are so cool! I'm splurging out over here, but okay, so this is being added in post. I've already made the entire video, but it's been confirmed from Jerome McHale from Konami R&D that this does actually work with pre-preparation of rights. So that's just another card that gets accessibility to it in the deck, which makes the deck even better. The reason it works with pre-preparation of rights is because all pre-preparation of rights says is to add a ritual spell and a ritual monster that is specifically named on that ritual spell from your deck to your hand and I overlooked this fact when I was originally making the video uh, but the fact that that little protection effect specifically applies to Revendred Slayer that means that it's named in the ritual card that means that pre-prep gets to add it oh my god this archetype gets to work with pre-prep this is insane! So disregard everything I said before, I'm gonna leave it in the video, but disregard everything I said before about how this couldn't work with pre-prep, because it does and has been confirmed from one of the Konami R&D staff. Jesus Christ! This got insane real quick, but back to the regular video! We still have one more card to talk about, we're not even done! We get a trap card in this archetype which is Vindred Reorigin, which is a normal trap card that says target one face-up monster your opponent controls that has a level. Tribute it, and if you do, special summon one Vindred token, a zombie dark, attack zero, defense zero, with a level equal to the tributed monster's original level. While the token special summoned by this effect is on the field, you cannot normal or special summon monsters except for Vindred monsters. So this trap card is really cool as well, because it's a form of removal that's already built into the archetype. That's actually neat. You, It's very limited in terms of what it can do because it can only affect monsters with levels, so if your opponent has Xyz monsters out, can't do anything with that. Link monsters out, can't do anything with that. But this thing is capable of being a basically non-targeting, well no it does target, a, um, a non-destruction removal for threats in the format. Any threat that has a level is very easy to be dealt with with this card. Like if your opponent summons an indestructible crystal wing with Wind Witch Ice Bell plays, you can set this card, activate it, you target it, and then you tribute it and get your own level 8 token. This is such a good form of removal, but then it's also capable of being tributed from your board 
for the use of the ritual summon because the ritual doesn't have to be exact levels. You can exceed the number of levels you need to summon Revendred Slayers. Even though it is only a level 6 ritual monster, you can get a token as big as you want it and then just use it to summon Revendred Slayers. I'm really excited for this. I'm so excited. You don't understand. This is a zombie theme and a ritual theme. Both of those don't really have that many good decks in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. Very few and far between has there been like meta-defining zombie decks and meta-defining ritual decks. And now we're getting a TCG exclusive zombie ritual archetype. Whoa. <laughs> the fact that this ritual spell says can be used to ritual summon any Vindred ritual monster means that we are going to be getting more of these motherfuckers to be used with this amazing ass ritual spell and we're probably going to be getting more ritual spells as well that have different effects that basically each one will probably give additional layers of protection to a different name like revenge red origin only protects revenge red slayers the ritual monster we're getting now but the next ritual monster and the next ritual spell that we get might have a similar summoning effect sort of thing but then its graveyard effect is you can banish this card to protect Revendred, whatever its name is. So the protection layers could easily become something that wall up for specific monsters, but the ritual spells can be used for all of them, it looks like. And we're definitely getting more Revendred ritual monsters, or else they would not have printed this card to be able to summon any Revendred ritual monster. And we're definitely getting more ritual spells, or else they would not have printed Revendred Slayers to say can be ritual summoned with any Revendred ritual spell. Like, it's so easy to figure out. We're getting more ritual monsters and more ritual spells in this archetype further down the line. We're probably going to get one each set. One monster and one spell in each set for the next four sets. If we get more, fantastic. I'll welcome more. But we don't have a searcher for this archetype straight away, but we don't need one. Why? Because these cards can be accessed from the graveyard with all the good generic zombie support that we have thus far in the form of Unizombie, Gozuki, the new TCG exclusive that's coming out in this set that I'm going to be talking about in a separate video, all that sort of stuff. So I am really excited for this archetype to land. And I told you, like I said earlier, I'm definitely going to be picking it up, 100% going to be picking it up and holding on to it because I don't think it's going to be good straight out of the gate in Code of the Duelist, but I definitely think the potential for it to be good could very well show itself by Circuit Break. And when, once we know what the second wave of support is in Circuit Break, I could easily see this deck having something that pushes it over the edge, because right now it's literally right at that precipice of all of these cards are just really good. And the fact that the Ritual Monster itself gains additional effects from the zombies and the zombies are so easily accessible because of how the zombie support that we have in Yu-Gi-Oh works man this this could be a wild ride for the next year with this TCG exclusive archetype this could be an amazing card now we have the potential we have things that can be built off here I really don't want Konami to fuck this up I really really want to know what your guys' opinions on this archetype are in the comments down below I am super excited extremely excited do not wish to be disappointed but let me know what your opinions on these cards are in the comments down below i think that it's a fantastic first step especially considering the fa archetype literally is garbage this tcg exclusive archetype could be really really good in the coming months essentially once we get more support for it it could definitely be really really good it has the building blocks the foundation the potential to be there and I really hope that I don't get disappointed on this one. But again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly. Help me be able to make content. Help support my ability to make content well into the future. Help some future projects that I have that I want to do come into fruition. All that sort of nonsense. Just contribute to something that you like and enjoy. If you enjoy my channel, then definitely go check out the Patreon link in the description. And check out the reward tiers to get something back for yourself in terms of abilities to speak with me on un basically unrestricted basis all these sorts of different things that are in the reward tiers definitely go check that out and if you want to consider contributing to it then you have my eternal gratitude but other than that i don't know i i might have even missed talking about things on this i feel like i may have missed talking about things and i hope that people point it out in the comment section down below but i'm just so excited i can't i can't get the thoughts of what this could be out of my head 
to the point where I can't calm myself down to think about anything else. <laughs> so, if I miss anything, point it out in the comment section down below. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual. If you made it this far into the video, give me a hashtag ritual zombies in the comments down below to let me know you made it this far. But other than that, take care guys. I will see you in the next video.